Detention basins like this are a storm cloud on the horizon. When I go into subdivisions that are 30 years old, there are zero detention basins. When I go into a subdivision that's two years old, there are one, two, three, four, five, six retention basins. So what has changed? It's called the Clean Water Act. And with the latest revision, the EPA now has absolute power over the people to inspect our subdivisions, to fail our subdivisions, and to levy large fines against our subdivisions. Uh... That's right. It's the perfect storm where our HOA, Homeowners Association, can get a huge fine from the EPA and then pass those special assessments straight through to your checking account. We have tons of ground to survey, so let's do that next. <laughs> In the last 10 years, the emphasis on detention basins has ramped up at an alarming pace. You see new streets and new homes create so much runoff that that excess water can cause erosion out in our creeks. So the EPA wants us to store, or slow down actually, that water inside of our subdivisions rather than just giving it a free release back into the creeks and streams where it can cause all of this erosion. Here is a detailed video showing just what builders must do now for brand new subdivisions. All right, so here is one of those detention basins that during construction, these things are layered, during construction with the various runoff in the siltation, they will fill up with some solids, okay? So before the builder can get their deposit back from the city, they need to recut these. So the first step of recutting it is that they scrape out. You can see the cut in that far side over there. They remove all the water, they dry it out, and then they will come in with some fresh piping and they'll do various layers of sand and silt and gravel and minus. And they will uh, reestablish these long-term and then hand it over to the subdivision. So here are some of those ingredients. We have sand, then there's some small gravel, then there's some thicker gravel, and it's all put in these various layers so that the basin can manage it correctly, slow it down, hopefully grab the solids, let them filter out, and then release the water down into the creeks very gradually. There are even these series of blue vents down here. This one was just recently done here in the last week. See the blue vents out here, okay? And then of course they'll do the, the seeding and the strawing around it. So these various basins are put in place to slow down the water and let the solids fall out of it. Okay, there is the overflow there. Then the series of pipes all come down through here. There's a pipe up there. And here is the low point of the subdivision where they, it gets released back into the creek. Okay, now, I get the question all the time, why are the association fees so high? Why are the association fees so high? So 20 years ago, there would have been 12 more houses on this property here. However, in the interest of nature and MSD, they make these rules about water retention and making sure the erosion, many of you may have heard of the Clean Water Act before, they make sure that all of these things are good for, well, at least better, for the environment. The local utility responsible for our stormwater in my region is called the MSD, the Metropolitan Sewer District. The EPA and the MSD together provide us with 135 pages of rules and regs to which we must abide. I printed the whole thing last week and the language is above and beyond what subdivision trustees should be asked to understand. Then the trustees start getting warning shots like this, fired across our subdivisions from one property corner all the way over to the other property corner. And it goes something like this. HOAs are now responsible for stormwater compliance. There can be serious consequences for neglecting your stormwater pond or detention basins. 
If your HOA fails to properly maintain your pond or basin, it may incur some serious daily or weekly fines until they are brought back into compliance. What's not friendly about that? Those fines can range from $2,000 to $70,000 per month. Liens can be and will be filed against the HOAs for unpaid fines, which can lead to some significant legal issues in the future. To avoid these fines, your HOA needs to provide compliance by following the local codes and to follow the BMPs. So next, let's look at some defects that can occur inside of existing subdivisions. This retention basin filled in with soil and even some trees started growing out of it. It's time to dredge it out, haul the dirt away, and then start installing the various layers of biodiversity above that. It was a $178,000 repair. And with 171 homes in the subdivision, a special assessment invoice was sent to each homeowner for $1,040. Not cool, but this is only one of four failed detention basins in the subdivision. Can you say $4,160 per resident in the subdivision? Now, I'm not sure about your neighbors, but my neighbors would absolutely lose their minds and sadly it would get legal really fast. Next is a layered bioretention basin that was designed with ecological plants that were going to be good for both wet and arid conditions. Its intention was to be grasslands and to prevent erosion and even to look green. Um, I think it's failing on all those accounts. Here are some common ground defects in the subdivisions on the way towards bioretention. How are those working out? With 135 pages of rules and regs, it appears to me that all we've done is moved our erosion problems from our creeks back up into our backyards where controversy and expenses and lawsuits are very sadly coming soon to a subdivision near you. Instead of detention, how about we talk about retention basins too? Everyone likes the look of lakes and ponds, right? But instead of clean water, how about the world offers you algae and mosquitoes and bacteria and a unhealthy dose of floating trash? Yummy. This lake is just a $350,000 EPA citation waiting for you at the next subdivision meeting. And here is an image of what it's supposed to look like when it's all done. It's beautiful, isn't it? Well, for $216,000, it should look great. The question becomes, what happens five years from now when it becomes just another fine to the residents? Three years ago, I'm sitting with a builder and his sales rep. They seemed stressed out. You see, a few days earlier, a two inch rainstorm overnight washed water over the black siltation fence and it washed dirt into the creek below. An hour earlier, they found out that their penalty for that one storm was $64 thousand dollars and that was their fourth fine in six months so i asked them who pays for the two hundred thousand dollars in stormwater fees that the epa is forcing down your throats did you guess it that's right after every federal violation the prices of the homes went up ten thousand dollars the prices of the lot premiums went up another $5,000 to cover these large fees. Now, they can call it whatever they want, but to me, it's just another layer of taxation. When big government enters little subdivisions carrying a big legal stick like this, and they are demanding fines right through your front door, I don't consider that to be freedom. 
So my recommendation is if you have a subdivision with these bioretention basins in it, start early, save money to account for the future fines that are going to occur. I'm sad to say that these failed EPA inspections, the fines, the liens, the controversy, the lawsuits and the special assessments are coming soon to a vast majority of our subdivisions. This has been Mark Scheller predicting the future that has already started.